I want to begin today with uh, a reading from Mark, and we'll continue this in a second, but from chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. The beginning of the good news about Jesus Christ, God's Son, happened just as it was written about in the prophecy of Isaiah. Look, I am sending my messenger before you. He will prepare your way, a voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make his paths straight. I think of Isaiah and John the Baptist and, and the other prophets in the Bible akin to the crazy ones that we talked about last week, right? The visionaries and dreamers who dared to imagine and act differently, changing the world forever in the, plot, in the process. Pablo Picasso changed the way we look at art. Steve Jobs changed the way we interact with technology. Mark understands the importance of these people who sense, intuit, or otherwise figure out that a change is coming and begin laying the groundwork to help create the change and help everyone cope with it when it does come. John urges us to prepare for this change, to prepare the way for the Lord by repenting. I'll be honest, I've never put penitence and Christmas together before, but it really makes sense. Why wouldn't we prepare ourselves for an inner birth of Christ consciousness? To make way for a new outlook, John the Baptist recommends the powerful, yet woefully neglected spiritual practice of repentance. Mark continues. John the Baptist was in the wilderness calling for people to be baptized to show that they were changing their hearts and lives and wanted God to forgive their sins. Everyone in Judea and all the people of Jerusalem went out to the Jordan River and were being baptized by John as they confessed their sins. John wore clothes made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. He announced, one stronger than I is coming after me. I'm not even worthy to bend over and loosen the strap of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. John really wants people to prepare for a massive spiritual and social change. Why both? Well, for one thing, everything in the Bible is both socio-political and spiritual. The two always go together because our socio-political and spiritual lives, our spiritual ways of being, are always intertwined. John the Baptist unabashedly declares that both our politics and our spirituality are horrendous, and God is tired of it. So Jesus is coming to show us a new way, one that requires intense concentration and selfless commitment. Spiritual awakening is a colossal task. That's why John wants people to repent, which I know is a scary word, but repentance, penitence, is an essential spiritual practice that we ignore at our psycho-spiritual peril. Repentance is about remorse, but not guilt. It's about sincerely considering the crap we pull throughout our lives and getting over it by admitting our actions were inappropriate, hurtful, spiteful, or, or whatever they were, and then deeply, profoundly, feeling like crap about it. That's part of letting go. It hurts to admit we've wronged someone else in some way. It should. But we must also remember that repentance is not about beating ourselves up over everything, like eating meat on Friday or having one too many donuts. In the context of the Bible, repentance is saved for big things, for trespasses against ourselves and our neighbors, which are also trespasses against God. Everyone carries around spiritual baggage because we're human. And part of the human trip is carrying around all these bags, the bags of self-doubt, the bags of fear, guilt, uncertainty, regret. We haul all these heavy loads that often get heavier as we age, and we too often let them weigh us down. Mark suggests 
we need to more regularly spend time in penitent prayer because over time, all of this stuff eating away at us, silently or not, begins to build barriers between us and our God connection. Those God barriers then turn into real world social issues because once we feel separated from God, we feel separated from everyone. So those psychological, spiritual barriers between us and our God connection, they're what Mark and the rest of the biblical authors consider sin. For the Jewish people of the Bible, sin is any thought or practice that separates us from our relationship with God. Sin is not merely the unavoidable result of being born human. It's the human acts of selfishness, greed, lust for power, and neglect of the common good. In the Jewish context, one person out of covenant hurts the entire community. This is the Islamic context, too. Remember, this is a Jewish story. As it does throughout the Bible, the Jewish understanding that the whole people are in a special covenant with God, and therefore responsible for each other's well-being, is essential to understanding anything else, including Jesus and his mission. Penitence helps us grow into our covenant relationship. It retunes our minds to the God frequency instead of the guilt frequency. Psychologically, we're built much like the hard drive of a computer. Over time, after you've stored stuff and erased stuff and stored it and erased it a zillion times, a computer hard drive becomes fragmented. Fragmentation makes everything move slower because files aren't all in one piece, but sometimes scattered all over the hard drive. A simple thing like a word processing document, rather than being stored in a nice contiguous data line, has one paragraph in sector two, another in sector 3280, and a sentence in a couple of words over in sector 27b. When you open the document, the computer and the hard drive work fast enough to present you a single file, but in truth, that data is a mess, just like our unrepentant minds. To fix this, we must defragment or defrag the hard drive. Defragging resets everything and puts it all back in a nice, tidy, contiguous file, now allowing the disk to work at its best again. That's what repentance does for the human mind and soul. It defrags our spiritual hard drives of all the disparate, disconnected pieces of life we've picked up over however long it's been since we last defragged, if we ever have. Oh, did I not mention that to keep everything working its best, it's vital to defrag, to repent regularly? Advent, like Lent, was initially a time of spiritual preparation. While we wait for the birth of singular universal consciousness in every soul, as it was born in Jesus, let's get back to the ancient practice of repentance. Let's clean out our spiritual hard drives, polish our psyches, and reformat all the pain and suffering, remorse and regret, the grating guilt that overwhelms us with feelings of worthlessness. Because feeling worthless is the real sin. To get all of that garbage out of the way, to prepare the way for our spiritual rebirth, for our baptism into a new way of being, where we innately sense how much God loves us, how worthy we truly are, John asks of us what any good psychotherapist would, to be honest about the stuff we're hanging on to and to let it go. Repent, prepare the way for the Lord. Do it now. Amen. Well, my question for you is, what is your practice of repentance, of spiritual defragging? What is your practice of repentance, of spiritual defragging? Or if you don't have one, if you haven't thought about it, what do you think about this practice?